Hey everybody, hope all is going well and that things are good in your world. Um, as you may or may not have picked up on, I worked with Gigi primarily when he was in North Carolina um, doing the vocals for the Anti-Scene album and then, you know, when I brought him to Tampa uh, to do the Carnival of Excess album and uh, various other things. Um, in both of those occasions, or I should say on both of those occasions, uh, I, ha I did uh, photo shoots with Gigi. I think I did a total of five different photo shoots, three of them in North Carolina and then a couple of them in Tampa. Now, <clears throat> when, when um, with Gigi, at least for me, I wasn't a big proponent of always having the camera on or around or whatever. Like when Gigi was at my place in Tampa, I didn't always have a camera going or at the ready, you know, snapping pictures nonstop. I, I just had the vibe that, you know, Gigi didn't want to have that going on all the time. So I was pretty respectful of his privacy and uh, in terms of that kind of thing. I would always ask him, hey Gigi, you want to take a few pictures or whatever. Um, in North Carolina it was a little different because I kind of was up there specifically for that purpose to do the photo shoot for the album you know to shoot video footage for the documentary we were kind of working on together so it was a little different but anyways um i i probably shot you know hundreds of photos in different you know there was the axe photo shoot the photo shoot uh with anti-scene then uh there was a when he was being interviewed uh by that female journalist um I shot a bunch of pictures then, then when he came to Tampa I did some acoustic pictures, and then of course my favorite and the shoot that I think the best imagery that I took personally were captured was uh, when he was doing the photo shoot with the, the girls at, at the house in Tampa. Um, so anyways, in this video it's, um, you know, these, these are just, uh, I don't know, 40 or 50 of the images that are some of my personal favorites and I figured I'd share them with you guys. I mean, I'm sure you've seen these video or these images, you know, in various places over the years, um, videos or, you know, websites or whatever. But um, <clears throat> anyways, I just figured I'd uh, pluck a few of these, what I consider some of my favorite ones, put it out there and, uh, you know, let you guys check them out. I appreciate all the support you guys are showing and giving me. Uh, it, it really is much appreciated. Um, if you le like the videos, you know, give me a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. And uh, also, I love your comments. Um, so, yeah, tell me uh, what you like, what you hate, whatever. I love hearing it, all of it. <laughs> Anyways, hey, thanks again for checking this stuff out, and I really appreciate the support. You guys have a great day. This audio is from when Gigi was in Adrian prison facility in Michigan in uh, early 1991. There's too many people out there that they're sending, they're sending what they've got and nobody really is even asking me what I, what I think we should use. They're just, I, I think Terry sent him that picture and I was really pissed at Terry because I told Terry I could send the motherfucker at least a 1989 picture, you know, something. Because, I, you know, that's why I grew the beard and, and got uglier to begin with because I got sick of fucking all these motherfuckers and all these old pictures of me. There, there are still people today doing interviews that are using pictures of me from the dad with me. No way. I mean, I don't even look like that anymore. It just it irritates the fuck out of me, you know, because yeah. I'm an ugliest motherfucker now, and it's great. I like it better. <laughs> They're showing these pictures of me when I, you know, when I look like a fucking beauty queen or something. I don't think I ever look that good. Do I have, like, a button on and Brian Jones? Or yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's from the very first album I ever did, 1970. Eight or nine, I believe. Yeah. And, and that fucking picture, man, I can't believe I ever looked like that. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> but, but it's cool, you know, because that's what I look like. And, and, and I think when, when Black and Blue reissued my first album, I think they should have used that photo. They're still very intense records. I mean, those records, especially the Freaks album. And, and I, when I, you asked me a question about what got me out of my, my solitary there that time. Yeah. That was the very first thing I did. After that year that I'd locked myself in my room and just like hung out in the soup kitchen, that was the band that got me out. That's, that's the actual recording I did. I was still in that stage of my life when I recorded that album. That's probably why, yeah. That's it comes out on that. Yeah, the feeling is so intense in that. It is. And, and the 
songs, and I even explained that on you know, on what I sent you. Is that they're so uh, they are so real, and and to this day, whenever I hear that album, um, I mean I haven't heard it in a little while, but when I when I heard it, I was thinking, man, that fucker is on. Just what was happening, and 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 it holds up. It's still true. I mean, it's like really, it is the Bible. It's, way of life yeah I noticed you have a you have a song uh, and a poem The Troubled Troubadour of Tomorrow yeah that that actually was a was a poem I wrote before I did the record I think we called the record The Troubled Troubadour I think, well basically Screw Magazine called me that that's where that whole Troubled Troubadour thing came in uh, well I did that it's, a, it's like an interview story that they did it was like a two page spread it was big though I mean, maybe it was two and a half and it was right after I played the Cat Club and I made all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> I went into New York and just sort of fucking... Stop on it, yeah. Flashed. I was the Village Voice for like seven fucking weeks in a row. It was pretty unheard of for anybody, so I mean, I did something. And and uh, then they did this interview with me and it says, G.G. Allen, the troubled troubadour of tomorrow. And it was pretty on, I thought. Yeah. And, and I, that just always stuck. And, and, and then I used it for that poem and then uh, I... I it's not a song, really. It's the overall EP. Uh huh. It's a song that when I die and look at foot highway and Greyhound bus ride, man. I mean, but but when you link all those together, it, it here's the it's like it's like Boxcar Willie thinks the trouble true, but I think who I am. So uh, and, and then I thought it was kind of a catchy title for the book, although that may change. I don't know if that'll actually be the title of the book, but it's what we've thrown around. Uh huh. But I had to use a lot of people along the way, and I had to burn a lot of bridges. I'd have to, you know, tell people I was going to do this.